<laughs> Hello, everyone. Come on Welcome. in. Happy to have you here. Happy June. Happy summer. Happy yeah. summer. Officially. <laughs> Longest day of the year yesterday. Oh, nice. Did it feel long, Julie? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> as you're joining go ahead and uh if you want everyone to see make sure the chat is set to everyone to the hosts and panelists and uh, let us know where you're joining from today and rock so fun nice okay. George is in the house. Walla Walla, one of my favorites to say. <laughs> it's so fun to say. Got Missoula, Montana in the house. Oh. One of, one of our team members who's here today. Down the road from you. Great. I think we are officially coast to coast. <laughs> yes. All the way from North oh. Carolina to California. Is Highway 54, is that a town or you're just off of Highway 54 in New Mexico? <laughs> Amazing. Tucson's in the house. Oh. Louisville. Nice. What a good way to start. With our, this is our gratitude song that you're hearing in the background. More on that soon. We produced uh, a lot of our own music to help teach to some of the traits we'll be talking about today. Uh, I'm so excited to, to welcome you all. Um, thanks for making time to be here today. Uh, I know many of you are probably even on break, uh, a well-deserved rest, uh, but hopefully today feels energizing as we share some of the updates that we've made to Purposeful People, which is our pre-K to fifth grade social and emotional learning and character development curricula uh, that we have here at Character Strong. We like to call it a proactive solution for what elementary schools need most right now. And we're so excited and proud to showcase a lot of the things that'll be um, populated if you're a current user into your account starting at the end of this month uh, and throughout July with a lot of coming updates. And if you're new to Character Strong or just checking things out, uh, really excited to showcase what we have coming your way here today. Um, my name is Houston. I'm one of the co-founders here at Character Strong. I'm joined today uh, by Julie and Emily, the team that has been leading the charge to develop this content. Uh, Emily, uh, elementary specialist here at Character Strong. Julie, director of K-12. Uh, curriculum here at Character Strong, and we are all going to be sharing some good stuff with you. I'm going to start with a game. <laughs> the game is designed around connection because one of the things we believe very deeply at Character Strong is that uh, relationships matter, and we need practical, low burden ways to facilitate connection in a time where it's easy to feel disconnected. So I'm going to um, launch the slides just like you would in the curriculum. These come directly from our new uh, content different outcomes have different games associated with them. These are related to the outcome we call Be Kind. A few different options here. Um, I want to play one today uh, with y'all called Toss the Feelings. One of my personal favorites. Understanding what causes our emotions helps us manage our emotions and better empathize with others. There's a lot of different ways you could facilitate this in a classroom. You could do it as a full class. You could do it in small groups or with partners. And today, I'm going to play this activity with the people I have here in the room, and you can follow along in the chat. You see, I got a button here. It just says play. Yeah, let's click that. And the way it works is I click on a color from this beach ball. That beach ball is going to reveal an emotion, and these prompts can change, but you could say, uh, when was the last time you felt this feeling, for example? Let's use that as the prompt today. When was the last time you felt this feeling and why? Um, Emily, would you choose a color? Yes, let's go with... Uh... Purple. Purple. All right. You see one of our uh, characters. We'll share more about that soon on who these characters are and how they help teach two different emotions. But the prompt here is scared. In the chat, when was the last time you felt scared? And Emily, since I have you right here, when was the last time you felt scared and why? 
Um, last time I felt scared. So I invested in some noise canceling headphones, um, and was trying to get in the group of work and had those on and didn't realize that my fiance got home from work for that day. And he came up behind <laughs> me and I think I almost hit the ceiling jumping so high. So that was the last time I felt scared. So they work, they are <laughs> noise canceling, but not fear canceling. That's a more expensive no. investment. <laughs> Amazing. Julia, you want to, um, let's go, we're back to the main menu here. Um, you want to play a different game quickly? Yeah, I love top three. Let's check that one out. Let's go top three. Um, in the chat, would you choose a letter, A, B, or C? B, all right. Katie Thomas says B. Let's go there. So that this is find a partner as a class. Choose a letter to begin a series of topics. For each topic, think your top three answers and share them with your partner. We'll do this live together here, Julie, but you can follow along in the chat. So top three breakfast foods in the chat. What would you say are your top three breakfast foods? Julie, how about you? Uh, so many good choices, but I love a really good French toast. That's mm -hmm. in my, my top one. And then if I want like something more savory, eggs Benedict for a splurge. And then like my normal, like something I grab on an everyday breakfast might be like toast with avocado or peanut butter. I love it. In the chat, you got a lot of people sharing like, they're, oh, just, yeah. Good they're stuff. just tripling down on their favorite bacon, 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 yeah. or tacos, tacos, tacos. <laughs> Recently coffee, I've seen coffee, coffee, coffee. coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go next. How about this one? Top three favorite school activities in the chat and you, Julie. Top okay. Three Top three favorite school activities. Uh, well, when I was a kid, definitely recess is always in the top three. Um, I loved my language arts class and then I loved like theater arts class. It was super fun. Mm. What about I you? Some of those things. The theater was, was up there and leadership I was really involved with. And then uh, ultimate Frisbee. I was a big ultimate Frisbee player. You had um, that at your school. That's so fun. Yeah. Yeah. I played collegiate ultimate Frisbee, Julie. Fun what? fact about me. I'm an athlete. Wow. Fun <laughs> fact about Houston craft. Right. Uh, okay. Last one. Top three favorite colors in the chat. And my challenge to you is use not the eight Crayola box. We're talking like the 64 Crayola box. Fuchsia, cyan, mauve. Cornflower. <laughs> what? Is that a color? It's that kind of blue color called cornflower. I always loved that one. <laughs> yeah. Is, is that in your top three, Julie? No, 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 but hot pink, for sure. Yeah. I see someone put hot pink. Um, yeah, I like a good blue-green, kind of an ocean-y color. Yellow is always good. It's happy. Yeah. What about you? I just love, I'm just looking at the chat. We know. That one says Great Purple colors. Mountain Majesty. <laughs> <laughs> and I've, I've never known how to pronounce this one. Is it Cerulean? Cerulean. I think that's I think right. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it sounds like a green, oh. right? I like, like color it should be on the, the periodic slot. table of elements. <laughs> I like yeah. the seafoam green. Amazing. Yeah. All right, we'll head back to the main menu and I'll take us back to uh, just to kick things off here. And I, we believe in this deeply because you see, it doesn't take a lot of time. And yet we get to learn more about each other in this space, but also the chat, people in low burden ways, creating opportunities for connection, but also perspective taking, right? While you like Cerulean, I might like Purple Mountain Majesty or vice versa. So simple way to role model and you'll see how these come to life in our content here shortly. The frame today is lights, camera, action. It is uh, in honor of the fact that we're about to go live with all these updates, as well as in honor of the fact that uh, we've created a lot of really cool new content, some of which we will show off today. So that's the frame. We'll take these one at a time, uh, each one of them with a slightly different theme. We'll kick things off with lights. Lights. All right. One of the questions we've already had in the chat, and I was just asked this in an email this morning from a district. Um, why can't I see the, all the new updates in the website yet? Because we launched June 30th. So if you are counting down the days like we are, put that on your calendar. If you are a current Purposeful People user, June 30th is when you'll be able to see all the things that we're showing today. Uh, if you are a future Purposeful People user, then hopefully by the time you get into the curriculum site, it will look 
just like what we'll show you today. Um, but lights is really the, the why behind this. We're gonna shine a light on what is most needed in education right now. So let's start with our lights. We're going to talk about how we're meeting kids where they are, addressing their deeper need for connection. We're also going to talk about how we are lightening the load for educators. We know this work is not easy. We know it's an extra time constraint on your schedule, and we're going to show you ways that we have built in to make this easier for you to roll out. All right, so let's talk about our challenges. This is not going to be anything surprising to you who are out on the boots on the ground in the field of education, um, but this is just a few of the statistics post-COVID um, that we know has, has changed our world in education and changed it in, in really big ways as we've seen play out across the country in our schools. Um, students, we know are more stressed than ever. We've got higher statistics on self-harm at, at a young age. We know we've had behavioral challenges, both in the classroom and at home. We've got social challenges, we've got emotional challenges. Um, educators, we know educators have had maybe the most stressful year on record. Um, we know a lot have considered changing jobs. We know a lot of them are saying burnout is a serious problem. I don't know why I'm getting teary about this, but I am. I'm just, um, our hearts go out to the challenges that educators have faced. Administrators, we know this burden bears heavy on you as well. We know it is stressful to support teachers who are stressed. Um, we know that um, addressing the needs of students Character development and social emotional learning is also a stressor. It's, it's a big project, it's a big job. How are we going to do this? So we've been busy here at Character Strong. Um, we want to first make the case. I know we're, we're preaching to the choir. If you're at this webinar, you probably already know that it's important to teach social emotional learning and character development, um, but we're going to make a case anyways. We know that our educators are saying that their kids need SEL. However, we also know that they're saying, how are we gonna do this? We feel maybe a lack of resources or we really don't have time built in or we don't have the support we need or the, we're not, we don't feel equipped to do it. We know administrators are saying, yeah, we believe SEL is important. We believe this work matters, but we're not really sure how to do it. Please give, give, give us some ideas because we know that if we can really commit and cast a vision, implementation will be more likely. Successful implementation. All right, so here's our response. Like I said, we've been busy. We have teamed up with educators from across the country who are uh, seasoned teachers in the field. We have put together, we've, we've contracted with script writers and production crew, and the list goes on and on. Lots and lots of people contributing to this work. Um, but the first thing that we did was really put together a plan for combining social and emotional learning with character development. We know that this combination meets students where they are, it equips teachers, um, everything we built into this uh, curriculum from listening skills to conflict resolution, emotion management, goal setting, all the things that we know students need to develop the character that we want them to have. Uh, low burden, high impact. We designed a layout that is easy to navigate. We designed uh, little shortcuts and tools along the way to help cut down on planning time. We know how important that is. And then finally, the focus on a proactive solution. We wanted this to be rooted in relationships. We know that building that classroom culture is the, our strongest proactive um, way to roll out this work and to meet kids where they are. And we wanted to provide an avenue to connect educators to their purpose which we know is connecting with kids and making a difference. So hopefully we've created something that will do that in a very powerful way. So let's look at the building blocks on the next slide. Uh, we have worked to create specific social and emotional skills per grade level, and we'll get a little bit deeper into that later, combining that with nine character traits to lead to these three outcomes. So all of our resources and activities and lessons are designed for kids to develop kindness, wellness, and strength. And we'll dive into that a little bit deeper as well, show you what that looks like. Um, but first let's look at these nine character traits. If you have been a user of purposeful people, 
people for a while, uh, you will know that this is our foundation. We've had a product built around character development uh, for quite some time. All we've done now is expand it to include more explicit instruction around social emotional learning. Uh, but these are our nine character traits in the way that you will see them when you log into the website. So you'll see we've got them categorized, be kind, respect, empathy, and cooperation. So we are developing those character traits while we teach skills that fall under kindness, like listening and conflict resolution and friendship and leadership. And then be strong. Those are our um, executive functioning skills, skills like teaching kids goal setting and focusing skills and organization, things that we know they'll need for life success, responsibility, perseverance, and courage. And then finally, be well, emotion regulation, uh, taught through gratitude, honesty, and creativity. One of the things I wanna point out here is you'll see this order. The idea here is you would start the year with respect, it's our recommended order, and then move across to the next month you're teaching responsibility and then across to gratitude and then repeating. So the idea here is that you are spiraling through those three outcomes and um, building those social emotional skills that um, really spiral throughout the year for maximum implementation. This is our recommended order, still designed to be flexible. So if you've been using this for a while and you like the flexibility of being able to hop into whichever character trait you want each month, um, it's totally doable. But this recommended order provides you with that spiraling that we know uh, will help students really retain the skills that we're developing. And now, anything else to got you guys want to add to this before we jump into camera? Or like we'll add. We'll add in just a little yeah. bit to give more context, but thanks, Julie, for that painting the outline of, of the why, shining a light on, on both why it's essential and why we know some of the challenges that naturally come along with it and the ways that we've thought through those to design with that exactly in mind, right? How do we provide supportive, easy to use, easy to navigate content that is actually life-giving to educators in a time where, where we need those supports? Let's talk about camera. Emily? Yes. Our camera, we really wanted to not only shine the light on it, but then also be able to zoom in. And so what we're going to be focusing on in the camera section is really being able to see how does this come to life? And looking at how our targeted SEL instruction for each grade level really breaks down. And then that partnership with character development, which really is that key. We are helping students not only build skills that they can use within the classroom walls, but beyond in their community. And then finally, being able to zoom in and show you all of the fun production we've been working on this year. It's something that we're really excited to be able to not only unveil, but give to users to have that ability to be able to help support the learning that's happening within the classroom. So talking about the three outcomes, Julie shined a little bit of light on that, what our three areas are when we're talking about those character traits but even to bring them to life even more. In our younger grades, our pre-K through second grade classrooms, they're gonna be having these characters come to life. You'll have our be kind character, Soul, which is our son, our be strong character, Ida, which is our mountain, and our be well character, Trey, which is a leaf. And those three are gonna be the representations of these outcomes woven into classroom lessons, connection slide decks, and also the videos that help support. But you'll notice that it's broken down then into those areas. And to break it down even further, talking about the first one, be kind soul. If you wanna to jump to the next slide, um, talking about what that SEL outcome is, zooming in. We talked about social skills. Well, there's a reason why that's a focus for three months out of our year. But it also is tied into all the other traits as well. But during the Be Kind months, this is where we're going to see that focus on being able to help students improve cooperation, conflict resolution skills. As a former school counselor, I had curriculums from all over that would help me be able to support conflict resolution, character development, emotion regulation. And we're trying to weave it all into one. So it's low burden, not having to grab a bunch of resources. We also talk about inclusion, pro-social interactions. How do I communicate with others? And hopefully through all of the work with social skills, that can also lead to that research outcome of decreasing disruptive behavior. When we talk about our second um, outcome, which is be strong, 
that's going to be where we're focusing on executive functioning skills. Now, in the education world, when we talk about executive functioning skills, it can be a lot of different components, but we wanted to make it developmentally appropriate for our students. So executive functioning skills in pre-K and K is really about understanding, following directions, all the way to fifth grade, where they're going to be goal setting and being able to help them improve organization, focusing skills. And when we look at that research, executive functioning is really tied with academic achievement and also with behavior. And so being able to think about those outcomes that we're wanting to create that pro-social behavior in the beginning of the learning opportunities for our students. And then finally, motion regulation with our Be Well. And that's our tray. And you'll notice the little icons in the upper left are older grades, third through fifth grade. They're not going to have the animated component, but they're going to have these icons, which can help them with that learning as well. And so Be Well is really focused on our internal wellness, our mental health and emotion regulation, and to be able to give our students the tools to be able to not only recognize how they're feeling, but then to also be aware of those feelings, advocate for them, and then regulate them. All the way up to where some of our fifth grade group might be actually talking about how do I handle stress? And when we're focusing on these key components, research shows that this could increase resilience through adversity, increase engagement, and also help with the mental health aspect and relationships. And so that's why we've created these three outcomes and hopefully that can guide our work through that by incorporating the SEL and character development each month. So how does that look in the big things? Well, you'll see it throughout those months, I kind of talked on some of those areas that it's going to be scaffolded so that those SEL focuses for each grade level are able to be expanded and built upon. Now, if we're jumping in in fourth grade and we didn't have the learning before that, that's okay. Our fourth graders doing positive self-talk are going to have that basic review and understanding of how do I identify emotions? How do I regulate them? But you'll notice that it builds each year. So our students aren't receiving the same content year after year, and they have their own grade level focus. Be Strong is going to have those executive functioning skills, following directions, focusing, engagement organization, goal setting, and be kind as those social skills, being able to listen, showing friendship, and then conflict resolution. And finally, for our fifth graders, that leadership. And those build throughout the months. And that's why we sh showed you that progression where we're going through the outcomes one by one. So Houston, if you actually wanted to jump to the page where it shows the monthly traits in the curriculum site, um, it can you can kind of see that scaffolding where we're spiraling throughout. So students aren't going to get three months of social skills in a row. It really helps with them being able to come through these throughout the entire year. So they're going to get social skills and then they're jumping into executive functioning skills and then emotion regulation. And then it comes back to empathy where we're reviewing and building on those skills they developed in respect. We'll be able to show it more when we dive into like an actual lesson, but we wanted to give that zoomed in version so you can see that intentional focus on SEL with our expanded curriculum. And to bring it all to life, one fun thing is we've been working as a team to bring production with a purpose, our own production things. And here's some behind the scenes. It's been a really fun year being able to dive in, create not only um, visuals with posters and animations, but then to actually create our own video series for lesson content where there's going to be videos that are um, available, but also for mindful moments and brain breaks and educator tools. This is from some pictures from our set. We spent 10 days out in Los Angeles filming with amazing group of students and also with an amazing crew. And um, I was able to experience that. Julia was able to experience it. And it was one that was to remember. These students were so excited to be a part of something that they thought was really cool. And they questioned sometimes, is this really gonna be learning? This was us playing games. <laughs> and so being able to see, even test out some of our things with students live on set was great too. And how that comes to life? Well, Houston, if you wanted to show off 
where these videos are actually going to live. They'll be embedded in our lessons, but then they'll also be in a campus resource classroom videos where it's going to be a library that you are able to sort and pick through. So Houston, if you want to show off that piece. You know, we know that um, finding these things and having resources at your fingertips that are easy to locate, depending on what you need, is a huge gift of time uh, to educators today. So for example, um, let's say you were a third grade educator, or, or you could click on multiple of these, but let's say you were working primarily with third graders. I can click grade level and you'll see some specific videos that are all curated to that third grade developmentally appropriate grouping. But I could come in here and I could select genre, SEL lessons or brain boosters, sing-alongs, mindful moments, SEL skills like be kind, be well, be strong. Let's focus uh, on emotion regulation. So if I click, this is third grade emotion regulation. You see a couple of videos pop up here. Let's just watch like a, a, a little bit of one of these just so you can see how the production comes to life. Hey there, let's chat about the emotion elements. Emotions are part of being human. We've all got them. We're made up of emotions. Just like the earth is made up of elements. Identifying our emotions can be powerful, important, and even healing. If we can learn to name our emotions, they become much easier to manage. First, let's dive into the water element. The water element is when you feel sad, or maybe disappointed. You might also feel tired or bored. Other times might be when you feel concerned and thoughtful for each other. How about fire? This element includes feeling scared. So you can see, uh, first of all, not only the skill of these young people, uh, but also the way that we try to teach, right? Some explicit instruction on some of the models that we'll talk about here shortly that help to instruct to a couple of key areas. This one specifically, emotion regulation. We know when we can name our emotions, we can better regulate and manage them. We can better empathize with others who might be feeling similar emotions. So some of our students here are teaching to that idea. Uh, but while we used live actors in some areas, we know that let's say we went to, I don't know, first grade, that we have, um, let's see if we take off emotion regulation, give us a couple more options, first grade, lots of different things available here to teach different concepts. One of my favorites here is called mountain views. So while we have live actors in some areas, we also have a whole suite of animated videos using some of those characters like Soul, Ida, and Trey that Julie and Emily were referring to earlier. Take a look at just a little bit of mountain views. Breathing like a mountain is slow and steady. When we take our time breathing in and out, we can feel calm, strong, and centered like a mountain. Will you join me on this breathing adventure? Great! Begin the breathing path by pointing your finger at the base of the mountain. Slowly breathe in as you trace your finger all the way up to the peak. How slow can you breathe out as you trace your finger down the mountain? Good job! Let's keep going! Oh, I'm in love with them. <laughs> it's so cute. And such simple but powerful ways to use characters and animation, song, video, to teach to some of the ideas that we're talking about. Yeah, Houston had just mentioned that one thing we wanted to give to educators is not them feeling like they had to be the ones that are telling students every component of this. We wanted to give it a fun aspect where these characters are teaching some of these skills too and giving educators another tool to be able to have common language. If I'm able to talk about my emotion regulation and be able to tie it to characters, our students are going to be more likely to use that language as they progress throughout the years. And so on the next slide, you can kind of just see, this is just an overview kind of reminder of that in our younger grades, we have that animation feel. In our older grades, we wanted to give them students their own age that they could see on the screen talking about things. Now that we've kind of zoomed in a little bit, let's actually take an action step and see this in progress and show you what you're all asking for, the actual site. What does this look like for our educators? 
Uh, first of all, uh, I can't not be distracted by the comment in the chat, which makes me so happy and uh, relates to what we're about to share here. My kindergarten daughter, who's currently at a school using Purposeful People, just heard the animation and immediately ran over and wanted to watch. What a gift. That's the goal. Uh, and we've taken a lot of time and care to build these characters, to build these worlds and these stories that we know are some of the best ways to teach. So let's check it out. You'll see we've role modeled some of these interaction, interactive connective, um, connection slides. We'll show some more of those here in a moment. We'll talk about how we've made it even easier to teach and deliver the content through projectable lessons uh, that allow for teacher ease of use and increased student engagement. And we have a lot of action-packed campus resources that um, make everything easier to find than ever before, sortable, uh, and uh, a whole lot of resources to support not just classroom implementation, but also campus integration, which we know is essential to bringing this content to life in lots of meaningful ways. Here's where we we'll start, which is structure. Uh, I'm a huge believer that structure uh, is a stress reliever. When I know what something is designed to do on a consistent basis, it allows me, once I get a few reps in, it starts to feel familiar. The more familiar it feels, the more fun I have implementing, the more creative I can be implementing, and the more overall fidelity I have implementing the thing that um, we know is really good to use. But if it feels overwhelming, well, then I'm going to start to check out. So there are five parts to every session. Every week contains five components to make content accessible, flexible, and easy to navigate. So I'm going to talk about them here, and then I'm going to bring them to life here in just a moment on the actual site. So each lesson contains a start section, or an entry task, something you could use as a uh, quick entry task or in a morning meeting. You have the connect section, which is designed to foster and focus on getting to know each other and building relationships. There's the grow section, the most traditionally curricular part of each lesson, which is designed to teach the SEL skill at hand uh, with a focus on the character trait. The respond section, which is a choose your own adventure, a library of resources for you to choose what your students need in any given moment, whether that's an opportunity to upregulate or downregulate. And then there's an exit, a way to close things up, to put a focus on reflection and to help students and us as adults generalize the skills into their real life. So let's have a look. How does this actually uh, play out in the content itself? I'm going to come back here to that screen that helps us navigate to these different areas. The best part about this is if I'm a second grade educator, this is where I live. This is my landing page that has everything I need all in one place. And all I have to do is click on empathy and it'll load up everything I need right here. So empathy, you'll see I'm in second grade week one. Up top, you'll notice the outcome. Empathy is focusing on helping students be kind. The trait here is empathy. And then in second grade, as Emily referred to earlier, the focus is on understanding conflict resolution. So that's the SEL focus, right? Which developmentally over the years, as I move through empathy, every grade level has a different focus. But skill builds on top of each other. So over time, students are getting different inputs towards similar skills that help them be more kind in the world. One lens of empathy and kindness is conflict resolution. Kindness is harder to practice when you're in conflict. And so having skills to navigate those situations and circumstances uh, with that SEL skill of conflict resolution is a big part of practicing empathy in the world. So how does that play out? Well, I'm gonna move through the page here and talk about each of the sections and show you how each of them plays into the teaching and developing of these skills. At the top, the staff pursuit. One of our favorite lines here at Character Strong comes from our chief development officer, Dr. Clay Cook, who says when it comes to school culture change, we are first and foremost in the business of adult behavior change. That's the hard work. Right? So how do we as adults role model this work in the context of the classroom? So you'll see every week across the entire school, adults are being challenged to put into action in some way the trait that we're teaching to. So this one's called the two by four strategy, designed to help role model empathy. Choose one student, commit to investing at least two minutes a day for four days in a row, checking in on them to find out how they are, how their family's doing, 
or what is one feeling they've been experiencing a lot recently? Understand a bit about their story and build a more authentic connection. That's the challenge, right? It's an invitation, not a demand. The idea here is the more we put these opportunities in front of adults in our building, the more likely we're going to see those behaviors role modeled across a building. One of the most powerful ways we can teach. When I'm done, or if I don't need this portion, I just hit the little minus button here and it shrinks it out of the way. If I come down here to the family focus, this is inviting our families into the process, which we know is a huge piece of the puzzle. We need to make sure families are informed and involved and inviting them to practice these things alongside their students. So you have conversation starters and challenges. One of them designed to get their kids or their young people talking about the things that they're learning in the context of the classroom. And the other one is an invitation to challenge the family to role model or practice the trait at home. By the way, anytime anything is ever family or student facing, it'll always be available in Spanish as well. So all I have to do is navigate here in the bottom left and I can toggle between English and Spanish. So you see this is family facing, which is really designed. So if I wanted to send this or communicate this with families, I can copy and paste. Click back to English. Navigate my way down a little bit further. Here we have the start section. Start section is designed to start conversations at the beginning of a class or in a morning meeting. Especially in week one, it's mostly about helping students understand what the word is. So we have empathy. And I can click to project this really easily right from the slides. Knowing what it is just on words is one way to teach it. But we think one of the best ways to teach to these different traits is to bring it to life through song. So you'll see we have the Watch the Empathy Sing Along, music that we produced, wrote, and created animations to to help students understand what empathy is, which is understanding and connecting to other people's feelings. Take a look at how it comes to life and song. Remember a time when you felt scared and you wished you had somebody there. Remember a time when you felt small and you needed a friend to break your fall. Try standing in someone else's shoes. Listen. understanding and connecting to other people's feelings empathy is healing apologize in advance for that being stuck in your brain the rest of the day but that's part of the point teaching through song and visuals one part of the start section again any of these i can uh, shrink down when i'm done i come down here to the connect section be Kind Connection Games. If I click on this, it just loads up what we started with at the beginning of today's webinar. Connection slide deck where I can come in, navigate to any of these that myself or my students choose as a way to get to know each other better. And then we get into grow. Explicit instruction, experiential or activity-based learning to help students really develop the skills that we know help increase life success. In this situation, we're talking about a piece of what we call the tree of choices, one way that we help teach to conflict resolution. Julia, you want to talk through these growth slides a little bit? Yeah, one of the things that has already been asked in the chat that I'll address, these growth slides are projectable. Anything that's projectable, which we would call classroom facing, is available in English or Spanish. So what we love about these growth slides is they were designed to be a longer lesson, 20 to 30 minutes. We know that's a big ask for teachers. And so we asked ourselves, how could we make this easier for teachers to implement? And one of the things that we came up with was having it projected onto your screen to literally guide you through the lesson. You might 
spend a couple of minutes reading over it ahead of time, but you will have it on your screen to guide you. You can sit on the carpet with your students or at a table with your students and literally just click through the slides to guide you through any of the, the prompts or questions along the way. Um, you'll see Houston was just, sorry, Houston, I know you were highlighting that section and I just kept talking ahead of you, but he was highlighting that overview section at the beginning of the lesson, which is where you'll get a quick view of what am I teaching? How are my kids going to be grouped? If there are any materials that are needed, those will be listed there as well. And then the lesson itself projects, guides you through, um, always going to have an opening question and the objective there for you, projectable images within the slides that can go full screen. This is our tree of choices, which is our original uh, designed in-house alongside Dr. Clayton Cook, a conflict resolution tool for students. Um, this helps them get to the place where they can resolve conflict in a, a clear and successful way with their emotions managed. So that's projectable there. And then this little lesson is taking you through, is this problem big or small? Teaching students why that might be important to identify what is the difference between a big problem and a small problem? And then how can I recognize the two? So this activity, kids are going to go to one side of the room if they think it's a small problem, the other side of the think it's a big problem. So that experiential kinesthetic learning kids up and about, but also having the chance to stop and reflect. Why did you make this choice? Why do you think this is a big problem? Why do you think it's a small problem? You know, what, what made you um, think that way? And then maybe even what would you do next? So uh, really getting kids thinking proactively about um, problems that they may face in their real life. Yeah, we're pretty proud of that section. Uh, we, like I said, we know 20 to 30 minutes is a big ask. So anything that we can do to make it easier for educators, um, make it less time consuming to plan, that was uh, definitely part of the goal. The other big goal here is that this is where your explicit SEL instruction lives. There are a lot of components available for you each week. This is the one that's going to be really closely tied to those research outcomes that you know you want to see. So this is a section you don't want to skip. Uh, we know of a lot of schools may share these lessons with the counselor guidance or uh, different ways that you might want to roll that out, but we highly recommend working in as many of these grow lessons as you possibly can. Um, they're really where we go deep with this content. What I love about this section too is you saw the visuals that pop out, but this is also where we're going to integrate some of those videos where it brings the content for that lesson to life to help the educator have a fun way to introduce topics. So in the grow section is where you'll see some of those videos embedded as well. So I navigate down a little further, you'll see the respond section and you'll notice the title here says choose what you need. There's brain boosters built in here mindful moments and circle prompts. A couple things to point out here, right? These are designed as simple ways to help support students if you need at any time during the day with a focus on the trade at hand to have a brain booster, right? Get students up and moving, help them upregulate, or if students are feeling restless uh, or just need a moment to downregulate that mindful moment, again, attached to the trade at hand, an opportunity for them to connect back to their breath, to their bodies and refocus. Circle prompts, we know uh, many people here probably use a variety of different community circles, restorative circles, morning meetings, afternoon meetings, uh, and the circle prompts are designed to help support, give you some, uh, some simple tools and conversation questions uh, with a focus on the trait at hand. And anytime there's um, examples of activities that maybe you aren't as familiar with, we oftentimes have these videos built right in, like this one, watch the circle setup, and you can see us running this activity with real live students. So here's Julie leading uh, a circle with a group of students and you can see uh, how some best practices um, that you can use to set this up in your classroom. I don't know about you, I'm a real visual learner. So sometimes just reading instructions, I really, it's really useful for me to see it live with actual students. Last but not least here at the bottom of the page, the exit, a way to close things out there's a consistent format here that helps students generalize these skills through uh, some simple goal setting. See, I will power, uh, having them set a goal related to the trait we're learning. Uh, some of them are more story based um, invitations for you as the educator to share pieces of your perspective or your story. 
The whole purpose here is to come back at the end of a day or a week and reflect on learning as well as uh, figure out ways to put it into practice in their own lives, whether it's with friends or with families. The last piece to show off here that's fun is that we have these book recommendations at the bottom of every week. Um, these are things that we just have curated from different spaces uh, and recommendations from educators literally all over the world. Uh, and so these uh, are not owned by Character Strong, they're just curated by us, which gives us an opportunity to recommend some things with like read alouds that might support the learning that you're doing in the classroom. So you can click here, some purchase options come up and it just sends you to a, the Google store link to help you grab what you need if you need it. But you can also find many of these uh, online on YouTube and things like that. Uh, where some read alouds are available. So just to showcase it, I can come over here and click on week two. Staff pursuit's different, the family focus is different, and of course, all of the different components of the lesson, meaning in second grade, with empathy, there are four weeks designed just like this. This content, as Julie alluded to, is flexible in nature, which means that some educators or schools will choose to do one section per day, for the entire week, which means you theoretically have some form of SEL or character focus every day of the week, every week of the year. Some schools prefer the protected model, where it's every week we have 30 minutes. And if you have 30 minutes, you can choose what you need when you need it with a recommendation to focus really on that grow section as the most explicit instruction portion. And if you do that, then the start or the respond or the exit become icing on the cake that you can pull into areas as you need it. Just to model it as I make my way down the page, a different activity here, this one's called Grow with Kindness. Some people were asking about kindness in the chat, empathy every second week of every grade level is a specific uh, lesson on kindness. And you'll also notice down here in the respond section, it's not always text-based. In fact, we oftentimes have um, some of those things like the mountain breathing that we showed you earlier, this one is a call and response sing-along to our outcome related to be kind, just so you can see a little bit of it. Be kind, yeah. A mama bear looking out for her cubs. Be kind. A mama bear looking out for her cubs. So you can have students learn the dance as they are um, following it along as a simple way to get that brain boosted. Just to showcase it, um, I'm gonna head over here to um, grade five. Grade five, just to show you some differentiation, right? This one, the focus isn't on conflict resolution, it's on leadership, right? a totally different focus, developmentally appropriate for grade five with totally different lessons throughout. So here, right, empathy is still defined the same, but the video you're gonna find up top here is of students, who are similar to that age level, speaking into what they think the definition is. Emily or Julie, tell me more about like the philosophy of that versus the animated video. I think for students to be able to see themselves, we wanted to give them kind of this mirror view to be able to see people their age talking about how it relates to them now, not just adults saying how important this is, but students their age. And they still have the aspect of the animation and brain boosters and mindful moments for that fun aspect, but we wanted to give them that visual of themselves on the screen. What is empathy? Empathy is about walking in somebody's shoes. Empathy is looking at someone else's point of view. And an example of that is supporting your friend if they're having a hard day and you can understand what they're going through and you can support them. Empathy is understanding and connecting with other people's feelings. What? So you can see that come to life through their own lens and they give examples and talk about why it's important. So just to show a little bit of differentiation in the grade levels, so you can see how developmentally appropriate it is as we move pre-K all the way through fifth grade. The connection games are differentiated for those upper grade levels as well. The grow slides, of course, different lessons for every grade level. Um, and you can see some of these things put together for grade five instead. Last piece I want to show off today in the action-packed campus resources section 
is right here. Julie, you want to talk through any of your personal favorites in this space? Oh, so many, so many. Um, yes, I would love to look at supporting documents real quick. I know this is um, not necessarily the top of everyone's list, but if you are an administrator or really look, oh, not on that one. Sorry, we don't have that one built out. Sorry about that. Okay, we'll have to show you that another time. We'll be showing that. If you want to come to our demo of in a couple of hours, I'll be showing some of those other pieces. We're going to show you what's built out on our site that we are about to launch on June 30th. So yes, let's look at the getting started page, Houston. Thanks for that demo link. That's great. We can show you more there. Um, getting started page. This is going to be a great one-stop shop for the beginning of the school year, um, especially if you have educators who weren't able to come to a webinar or a dem demo and need to get their feet wet. We're going to have getting started videos. They can see what are some best practices, what are some tools I might need to roll this out in my classroom, and then how will I implement it? There's flexible implementation. If your campus has a really flexible timetable, if you have a, a great master schedule with a little bit of time carved out each day, we have a plan for how that might look in your schedule. Or if your master schedule allows for a weekly chunk of time, how could you allocate different components of each week into that? So we've provided um, three different ways that you could make this fit your needs on your campus. So that's going to be a great page for teachers to um, look at the beginning of the year. I know we had in the chat someone asked about, is there like onboarding? Um, that page is going to be a great location for onboarding at the beginning of the year people asking about books mm -hmm. uh, and just like those classroom videos this is one of my favorite pages here we have what we call our purposeful library so i can come in here and say hey i want a book that's uh developmentally appropriate for third grade and i want it focused on empathy and uh, various books will populate to the top here so you can see these come to life for example one of our longtime friends and someone who helped build the original purposeful people content is barbara gruner counselor out of Texas. And uh, you can see here a little overview of what the book is about and a link to buy the book there. So I can come in here. My whole library is sorted here and curated for me, much like we just showed off with that video library um, that I showed you earlier where things are tagged by different outcomes and grade levels. The last one I'll show you here is our purposeful playlist, these classroom playlists. You've heard some of the songs played today, but we have our own library of music. Uh, we have songs created for every one of the outcomes, the three outcomes, as well as the nine traits. So currently I have 12 tracks. Uh, we're currently translating these into Spanish as well. So you'll have that option. Um, but what we love about these, I can come in here and let's say I wanna play, um, uh, let's listen to, how about uh, creativity, one of my favorites. Oops. Close your eyes, what do you see? When I tell you to picture a tree Are you looking at palms on a warm sandy beach Or crunching on leaves that fell on the street Maybe you see something purple and pink Our trees all look different and that makes me think That a blank sheet of paper can be filled thousands of ways so fun. And if I come in here, I can click on the sheet music and lyrics. So if I'm a music teacher, if you listen and want to play it on the recorder, for example, all these are built for you here. So you can integrate these into some specials and other places like it. The goal is integration. How many places can we put this as reminders and reinforcement towards the things that we know we're all trying to teach towards? One of the things that I'll add about our, our playlist so that I love is we worked really hard to curate a collection of different sounds. So it lets the diversity not only in our sounds, but in our lyricists, um, so that every month has a little bit of a, a different sound and theme, which is a lot of fun for kids and adults. Emily. Let's talk about just a couple of these tools that we provide at the high level SEL, you know, some foundational SEL skills as a way to start to wrap things up. What are some of the key things that we know over the course pre-K to fifth grade are going to get taught, reinforced, and come back to multiple times? 
Yeah, one thing that we're building out is resources that can be used to facilitate not only like learning, but then application. And so um, some of the visuals you'll see here, this is for our emotion elements. We really tied into the earth elements of earth, water, air, fire. In the younger grades, it comes to life through our characters. Brooks is our water, Tara is our earth, Ember is our fire, and Bree is our air. And they all represent different types of emotions that might come. Um, and so students can start to be able to not only be aware of them, but start to say, you know, I'm feeling like Brooks today. I'm a little bit embarrassed. And then that builds into being able to use that to regulate. And so these visuals can be used not only in learning, but application of a calming corner. Or when I'm starting to need that regulation, a visual for teachers to say, could you point to what you're feeling today? So we wanted to give um, things that could be used not only in the classroom, but maybe out on the playground, in specials, or in the lunchroom, where sometimes we have those emotions come to life. Another visual we wanted to bring to life is our conflict resolution tool that Houston talked about. We have two different versions. One that goes a little bit deeper for our older grades where they actually get to dive into the make a choice. But what we learned through our um, implementation science and also through Dr. Clayton Cook is that students need simple steps in the moment when their emotions are elevated, that they're feeling these big emotions of conflict or problems. So giving them three simple steps of our roots, our heart, and then our branches. And make those choices simple, things that they can really be able to in the moment say, you know what, I can talk it out right now. I can breathe it out or I could move it out and go find somewhere that I can calm, calm down. And so giving them this visual is able to use in the classroom. And finally, our executive functioning section, we have some goal setting visuals and also organization tools that we've worked on to be able to help that learning come to life and easy to remember. We have mountaintop goals, and then we have our three T's of organization, thinking about our time, our tasks, and our things. So fun ways to bring those things to life. And those are embedded in our lessons. We have them in our campus resources to download as posters, to use as electronic visuals. Um, they can be uh, um, also included in any resources that you're creating for your classroom. These are some of the hallmark pieces that we teach to, right? And for each of the outcomes, be kind, big focus on the, um, uh, the conflict resolution and be well, big focus on those emotions and then be strong, the executive function portion, helping students goal set and organize and manage their things. These are uh, tools that we're, you know, we use to teach to and help students skill build over time. We come back and we reinforce these throughout the year and throughout those different traits, those different lenses. Um, so these are the key ways that we bring these things to life. Uh, we got a little time, just a few minutes remaining now for um, any questions that folks have. So feel free to drop into the chat um, we're so grateful for you all joining in here. We love hearing some of the feedback uh, of the organization, the videos, of the music, seeing those things come to life. And as a reminder, if you're a current user, this automatically, free of charge, gets updated into your account. It's the gift of the online curricula is we're always working to improve, adapt, expand as needed. We take user feedback all the time and translate it directly into action. So if you see something missing from here, let us know. Uh, we oftentimes will add things down the road just because we know enough people are saying, you know, this would be really useful for me. Um, so please let us know how we can serve in that way. Um, the content portion, right, the lessons themselves will be available June 30th. And then those campus resources will be continually added to over the month of July in preparation for the start of the next school year. So be on the lookout June 30th for that upgrade to your account. Uh, and throughout July, those campus resources will be uh, populated um, throughout that month. And then uh, if you're not a user yet, and this seemed exciting, <laughs> please, you can join a demo to ask more questions or book a call with one of our team members to talk about what it would look like to bring this to your campus or to your district uh, and beyond. So let's see a couple of these questions as we wrap up. And otherwise, I want to know in the chat. What questions yeah. do you still have or what are you most excited about? I see some excited about the new organization of the layout. We're, we're really happy that we're trying to make it a little more user friendly to navigate. 
Um, Jacqueline put, will our school need new logins? No, it's going to be the same logins for your school-wide campus. It will show up June 30th. Instead, when you click on Purposeful People, you will be directed to this new layout as well. Someone asked to see these list of the traits by month again. And Jennifer, if you want to send an email to the team, we can also send you a more detailed version that helps you paint it out month one, month two, month three, so you can see it a little bit more clearly, but this is how it would work. Month one, respect, month two, responsibility, month three, gratitude, and you move it down to the next line. Nicole put, will there still be images and quotes connected to each character word? Yes, in our start section, we have in our upper grades a focus on those quotes um, and being able to bring those quotes to life. So three weeks of emphasis on that, where then they get to talk about how their own words are important. On the flip side, pre-K through second uses the illustrations for weeks two through three to bring the image of that character to life. So lots of great use within those, but you'll see those two areas. And those are still gonna be able to be downloaded, printed, used for bulletin boards in our campus resources. So those are available as well. Are there fidelity checks included with the program? Uh, well, I think that would fall under assessment tools. Yes, we are developing actually five different tools that you can use for assessments. And one of those is a teacher self-reflection fidelity tool. Teachers will be able to reflect on and set goals around how they're implementing. Um, I know whatever, whatever your statewide uh, teacher evaluation tool is, it usually involves some kind of goal setting and data collecting. So uh, that one is going to be a great tool for educators to use if they want to set goals around implementing SEL or character development in their classroom, uh, they'll have some self-reflection and self-goal setting tools at their um, fingertips. Also, a student survey tool, a family survey tool, lots of different ways that you can measure this. We're firm believers that if you're going to invest the time and the resources it takes to do this work, you should measure it. You should see what can be celebrated and what can be built upon. Someone asked if, uh, if they have any questions or want to provide feedback on every page. Uh, there is this little button that floats. You can click here. You can rate whatever content you're looking at. Uh, and you can also contact us directly here. Uh, that is one way. Um, and Tia dropped into the chat another way to reach out. If you have any further questions coming out of today, uh, we're happy to help provide answers and supports as we can. Thanks so much for joining us today. We can't wait. Uh, to bring this to life in your accounts, showcase more. We have upcoming demos. Feel free to sign up, whether you're a current user or interested in learning more. We're so grateful for you. Um, and if there are additional questions, Jacqueline, I see yours coming in here. I think the best uh, way to feel supported there, either drop us a note, info at characterstrong.com or book a call directly so the team can talk with you one-on-one -on -one to, to talk through what it looks like to support effective implementation in the unique circumstances that we know all schools have. One of the reasons we built this in a flexible way is to support exactly that. Every school has a story and a circumstance. And so lots of different ways to support you no matter where you're at. That's great. Sierra, the visuals uh, you're referring to, um, the, if you're talking about the posters and definition uh, pieces and our SEL posters, quotes, illustrations, all of those things are available for download and you can decorate your halls to your heart's content. Yep, much like the other libraries, I can come in here and sort by different types. I can grab what I need in Spanish as a PDF or a digital version. So no matter what um, visuals you see, any image that's projected in lessons or throughout the content, uh, lives in this library here in both digital and high resolution for printing. So you can weave it into the hallways of your school. Great question. All right, team. Thanks so much, Julie and Emily, for your leadership bringing this to life. So fun to see uh, people's excitement and enthusiasm at, Adam, enthusiasm at it. I don't know how to say that. Um, <laughs> but for now, we got to go finish up this work so we can bring it to life here coming soon. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, y'all. Have a good one.